I now give the floor to the first speaker on my list, the representative of Baha'i International Community. We have you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Excellencies and distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the Baha'i International Community is pleased that the Commission has chosen to focus on youth and adolescents. It is especially during this critical period that individuals begin to realize their potential as protagonists of change in their communities and nations. Despite the many challenges that young people are inheriting, we must not see them as merely victims. Rather, youth and adolescents represent a tremendous source of intellectual and social potential, waiting to be channeled towards constructive ends. Our contribution to this session of the Commission focuses on education. Specifically, we wish to draw attention to a particular dimension, namely education in service of community, which in our experience is central to the transformation of the individual and community life. The future of today's society will depend to a great extent on the manner in which educational programs are designed to release the latent potential of young people. Therefore, formal and non-formal education needs to go beyond the exclusive aim of helping young people secure gainful employment. Educational processes should assist young people to recognize and express their potential while developing their capacity to contribute to the spiritual and material prosperity of their communities. This twofold moral purpose, to develop one's potential and to channel that potential to the betterment of society, provides an important axis of the educational process. If we examine the influence shaping the minds of youth and adolescents, we can see that many forces breed passivity and the desire to be entertained. In line with this trend, many educational programs perceive young people as mere receptacles of information. The worldwide Baha'i community, in collaboration with many others, is endeavoring to develop a culture which promotes an independent way of thinking, studying, and acting, in which students are active, self-directed, and united by a desire to work towards the common good. Though conditions vary greatly from community to community, the centrality of knowledge to the flourishing of youth and adolescence remains unchanged. Access to knowledge is the right of every human being, and the responsibility to generate new knowledge and apply it in socially beneficial ways rests on the shoulders of every young person. In the same way, the creation of an environment conducive to this process is the duty of every government. Meaningful participation also takes the form of safe and productive employment. Education that does not instill in youth an awareness of their role as active citizens and of the needs of their communities further weakens young people's prospects for employment. This in turn contributes to the exodus of educated young people from rural to urban areas and from non-industrialized to industrialized nations. Young people, though often perceived as simply the beneficiaries of education, must be involved in the development of educational systems. In this way, educational processes can be more closely aligned with the needs and aspirations of young people and of their communities. All have the right and responsibility to play their part in the betterment of society. To this end, the inequities of girls' access to quality education must be addressed. Governments must urgently follow through on their commitments to prohibit the unjust practices of infanticide, prenatal sex selection, female genital mutilation, trafficking of girl children, and the use of girls in prostitution and pornography. Addressing these critical challenges and extending educational opportunities to girls rests on the understanding that the equality of men and women, boys and girls, is more than a desirable condition to be achieved for the good of society. Indeed, it is a fundamental truth about human reality. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, the investments that governments make in the education and health of their youth and adolescents represents no less 
than an investment in the stability, security, and prosperity of the nation itself. Educational approaches and methods guide, guided by the needs and aspirations of respective communities and inspired by the awareness, awareness of inestimable potential latent in every child will awaken youth and adolescents not only to their own intellectual capabilities, but also to their role as protagonists of change in their communities and the world. Thank you.